Good afternoon, Algebra 2 students. You can see that I've got the problem up on the board here. Find the equation of all six function, well, six functions, with the locator point of negative 1, 3, and passes through the point 5, 9. Now, the six functions I'm talking about are the functions that we've come out of uh, Chapter 4 with. you got your x squared, your x cubed, your square root of x, your 1 over x, and your b to the x with the absolute value of x bringing it up the rear. I'm not going to do the straight line because you guys could do finding the equation of a line that passes through two points pretty easily. So that one I'm not going to work with for these six problems. Um, first thing we've got to identify is that locator point. From the previous page we saw that negative 1, 3 is that point and that it's going to pass through another xy coordinate of 5, 9. You can see that I don't just have x squared anymore, the parent function, I actually have it in that graphing form a times x minus h squared plus k. Again, the point or the purpose of what we're doing is we're trying to solve for this a value. I like this process because you can see in the equation itself, we've got five letters, y, a, x, h, k. Well, h, k and x, y equal those numbers. Same thing is going to happen with the cubed. We've got y, a, x, h, k. But four of those letters we're going to replace with the four numbers right up on top here. And then the only thing we're left solving for is the A in both of our functions. Purpose of this whole process is to get the graphing form of each of these equations from the general form. Or sorry, not from the general form, but from these two points, the locator and the point that it passes through. Process is as simple as it gets. Take out these four letters, plug in these four numbers. Y is 9. A is what we're solving for, H is 5, I'm sorry, X is 5, H is negative 1, K is 3. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. I have to go through the algebra to solve for A. I get 6 equals A times 5 minus negative 1 is positive 6 squared. 6 equals a times 36, and you divide both sides by 36, and you can see that my a value is 6 over 36, which simplifies into 1 sixth. And so now this equation, y equals 1 sixth, x minus, well, minus a negative 1, so x plus 1 quantity squared plus 3. Bring the camera in nice and close. And I'm not going to do this for every problem, but you're going to see the process. It is that straightforward. The y that they told us in the beginning, that 9 all the way over there. Where x is, I plug in a 5. And the 5 over there, the point they tell me it goes through. It's minus h, but h is a negative 1, so minus negative h. That's where I've got the 5 plus 1 equaling 6. Quantity squared. And then the 3 which was the k value from up here, plugs in here. Subtract the 3 from both sides, going through my basic steps of algebra to solve for a. So 9 minus 3 is 6, equaling a times 6 squared. Well, it's 36. Divided off, that's where the a is the 1 6. And then comes the rewrite. So I'm going to go through the same exact process for the cubed. And you'll see that, again, this process, it's going to get old pretty quick. 9 equals a times 5 minus negative 1 squared plus 3. I'm sorry, not squared, cubed this time because we're working on the cubic. 9 equals a times 6 cubed plus 3. Subtract 3. 6 equals a times 6 cubed. Now, I don't have my calculator, so I'm going to leave it as cubed, but when I divide off that 6 cubed, I've got a 6 to the first power over 6 cubed. A is going to leave me with 1 over 6 squared, which is 1 over 36. So my equation is now 1 36th of x plus 1 cubed plus 3. Now at this point, I would suggest, as every time I've said to do this, you plug this equation into your calculator. You can plug this equation into your calculator. And what you should be looking for, you know, you can do this in y1 and y2. 
and then you go into your table and just make sure that you get 5, 9 as an output and negative 1, 3 as an output. Two different equations, but the same exact process. I'm going to go through the same process now on the next page. I'm not going to pull the camera in close because it's going to, again, sound really redundant as I'm doing this. 9 equals a times the square root 5 minus a negative 1 outside of the square root plus 3. I'm going to move my 3 over. 6 equals a times the square root of 6. 5 minus negative 1 gives me the 6 inside the square root. Divide both sides by the square root of 6. Uh, now that's a little bit of a problem because we don't like the square root in a denominator. So I'm going to rationalize it, meaning multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 6. That means a is going to be 6 times that root 6 that I just multiplied top and bottom by. Well, six, root 6 times root 6 is 6. Now this now works out nicely because 6 and 6 cancel, leaving me with just root 6 on top. That's my a stretch factor. It's going to look kind of goofy because I'll have two square roots next to each other, but it works out. y equals the a value of root 6 times the square root of x plus 1 plus 3. And again, plug that into your calculator. Check to see if h and k and x and y are parts of the equation. Next one, 1 over x. That's the next one I'm going for which we said was a times 1 over x minus h plus k when we plug the h and k value back in there. 9 equals a, what we're solving for, 1 over 5 minus negative 1 plus 3. We subtract 3 on both sides. 6 equals a times 1 over 6. Well, multiply by the reciprocal to cancel out the fraction. So it's multiplied on both sides by 6. I'm going to get an a value of 36. Rewrite my equation, y equals 36, big parentheses, 1 over x plus 1 plus 3. And again, can't emphasize enough, you want to plug these back into your calculator and go into your table to make sure that you have both of those solutions. Last but not least, we have our exponential function and then the absolute value function. Same rules apply. I'm going to make this b b2 just for our purposes to try to figure out the stretch factor. This one will get a little dicey because of the extra algebra we have to do with having all these extra numbers, but we can still do this. y, which is 9, equals a, what we're solving for, b, which I just said is 2, x minus h, no, let me backtrack for a second, it's not x, it is 5 minus that negative 1, And I said b was 2, so I'm going to erase that. I've got to make sure I'm doing all my steps appropriately here. 2 to the x minus h, which is about 5 minus negative 1, plus 3. Subtract 3, subtract 3. I've got 6 equaling a times 2 to the 6th power. The x one is 5 minus negative 1. So 2 to the 6th power. Let me grab my calculator real quick. I want to say it's 64, but I'm not 100% sure. 2 to the 6 is 64, so 6 equals a times 64, divided both sides. 6 divided by 64, enter, crazy little decimal. Math, enter, enter, converts it back into a fraction for me. a equals 3 over 32. So my equation now reads y equals 3 30 seconds times 2 to the x plus 1 plus 3. Kind of a messier looking equation, but if you plug in all that stuff, keep in mind parentheses very important when you try to plug in that exponential. Put in all the parentheses, you'll get it going through those two points. 9 equals a absolute value 5 minus negative 1 plus 3. Minus 3 on both sides, very redundant at this point, but doing the same thing. 6 equals a times the absolute value of 6. Well, the absolute value of 6 is positive 6, so I'm going to divide off 6 on both sides. Hey, look at that. We've got an a stretch factor of 1. So now I'm going to say my equation is y equals 1 times the absolute value of x plus 1 plus 3. And again, 
Always, always, always plug it back into your calculator, into your y equals, and check your table to make sure that it passes through those points. Promise every single time it's going to work. Have a nice day.